Here. Councilmember Sawyer. Here. Let the record reflect that all members of the subcommittee are present. Very well. We'll go ahead and uh, go to item number two, public comments. If we can open up our public comments, uh, those on Zoom. When we need the advisement. Uh... You know what? I will go ahead and read that for you. Um, Please. Pursuant to government code section four, sorry, 54953E and the recommendation of the health officer of the County of Sonoma, the downtown subcommittee members will be participating in this meeting via Zoom webinar. Members of the public can participate in the meeting via Zoom by visiting um, the um, srcity.org Zoom. Um, the link is also provided um, at that um, location or by dialing in. Mem members of the public can participate in public comment by utilizing the raised hand feature or if calling in by pressing star nine to be recognized to speak. Thank you. Thank you. And do we have any public comments this morning? We do not. Very well. Any recorded messages? Uh, we have no recorded messages or emails for this meeting. Perfect. Perfect. With that, we'll go ahead and close public comment. And item number three. Uh, parking program. Rafa, if you'd like to take this matter forward. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, uh, item 3.1, we have the report from the par uh, re report, the parking program report, I apologize. Uh, Alan Alton, our Chief uh, Financial Officer. Just one Please. moment, and I will go ahead and um, promote Alan and pull up the his presentation. Thank you. And I believe Alan will also be introducing our new parking manager. Yes. Morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good, sir. All right. So um, I have a uh, hopefully quick parking update uh, today. I think what I'm going to do is. Um, uh, before I begin my comments, uh, we have hired a uh, new parking manager. His name is uh, Chad Hedge. He comes to us from the um, Marin Water District. So we actually took somebody back from the Water District instead of giving them all away. <laughs> I, I, I view that as a, as a great victory on our part. Um, well, it's about time, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Chad started uh, on Monday, um, or last Monday, so he is getting his uh, feet wet uh, <laughs> and a lot of stuff thrown at him. Uh, going forward, he'll be the one giving this uh, this update. Um, he's got a, uh, uh, a very diverse background. Um, uh, he was a, uh, uh, a crew chief working on helicopters in the Army. Uh, he was a, uh, a, a firefighter with CAL FIRE, um, worked for the, uh, uh, the Conservation Corps uh, in Sonoma County, um, and, uh, and then was a crew supervisor uh, with uh, Marin Water District. Um, the, the one thing that, that really sold me on him was he has very solid uh, team building and, and uh, management skills in those, in those ways. So uh, while admittedly not a lot of, of parking experience, we can teach that. Uh, um, I'm reminded that Tim Nadeau started without a lot of parking experience and became a, a very good parking manager. So I have high expectations for Chad um and uh and you'll get to see a lot of them going forward so with that i will start my uh uh presentation uh if we can if we can start that eileen absolutely thank you Go ahead. So, and, and uh so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cover um four items in this update so the first uh we'll kind of uh, tie a bow on the EV charging uh, part of it. Um, 
And then I believe at the last minute, we were asked to provide an uh, update on revenues and fee waivers. So I'll do that, but in addition to just the, uh, the fee waivers, I want to provide some context on what we're seeing in terms of parking trends and then uh, provide just a really quick financial summary of, of the parking fund as we are developing our budgets. Uh, we had a, uh, uh, I have some budgeted information there to be able to share with the group um, uh, going in. So next slide, please. So in the, at the last minute, we, we mentioned the, the signs and the stenciling going up. I didn't know exactly when they were gonna go up. They actually went, went up, I think that day. Um, so here is, here is what, what you can see out in Courthouse Square. So on the, on the large picture, I have the, the square and the arrows are pointing to the two uh, uh, locations uh, where there are, uh, two spaces at each charging station that not only has the, the signs with the uh, brightly displayed uh, with, with red background and also the stenciling on the ground. Um, early on, uh, we were finding that we weren't uh, needing to issue a lot of warnings. So it seems that the signage is doing its, its job. Obviously, as time goes on, we'll be able to have a little bit more information on uh, how those spaces are being utilized. Next slide, please. And the next slide. So this is uh, just to go over real briefly the, the fee waivers. I think y'all have heard this enough, but this just provides a timeline of where we are uh, with it. Um, we, we, uh, began our fee reductions in July of 2020. We had, we actually um, uh, uh, authorized free parking or the council authorized free parking at the, the initial uh, um, start of the, uh, of the pandemic. And then we went into a fee reduction program uh, beginning in July of 2020. And we've extended that several times uh, and then the end date for this is set for June 20th or June 30th of 2022. So uh, next slide, please. So to date and, and looking forward for the last or for the, the final quarter of this year, um, uh, we're estimating about a million dollars, a little over a million dollars of, of um, of parking uh, uh, price drops that we've, we've uh, hopefully have uh, helped the businesses in the downtown to be able to um, uh, uh, incentivize people coming um, to the downtown to park. Uh, however, I will get into in the next couple of slides where we're seeing the trends, um, uh, which is a, a little is, is interesting. I think we want to look at it a little bit closer, but it's uh, but uh, it, it's it's an interesting thing. So let's move on to that to the next uh, next slide, and then the one after that. So we we looked at where we were at a point in time pre-COVID. Uh, so we looked at February 2020, and then in the middle of of, of the pandemic, and then hopefully toward the end of the pandemic. And what we're seeing is that where people park are pretty much where they where they were pre-pandemic or their the, the parking changes haven't or the, the fee reductions haven't really changed the, the trends and where, where people park. So um, I I don't know why that is. We haven't really uh, uh, interviewed anyone or done any further research polling type of research. This is just the raw data of where we are and what we're seeing. I guess we can infer what we want from it, but um, uh, I thought it was interesting and, and, and wanted to share that. I know in the past we've, we've talked about, um, about these trends and where people park, but, uh, but to look at it at, at pre, middle and hopefully post pandemic to see relatively the same 
uh, 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 parking preferences was, I guess that, that says a lot about the demand in, in the, the parking area. So then in the next slide, uh, we actually are, are seeing where we're, our transactional trends are. So the bottom line is, is the prior fiscal year. Uh, and, and as it ends in June, it picks up again in July. So it ends on the, the, the right hand side and then picks up with the yellow chart on the, on the left hand side and moves forward. You can see that we were trending up and trending to a higher number of transactions and then really started trending up around December and then the uh, Omicron variant hit and we went down again, but hopefully we'll start trending back up. And then obviously what we're, what we're really hoping for is that we start hitting that pre-COVID average. That is, that's, uh, um, that will mean a lot uh, to, the, to the fund. Um, and I, I will say we, we don't have our March uh, uh, revenue numbers yet. Um, uh, that's just due to the delay in, in the, the revenue posting. Uh, later this month, uh, um, we'll have all that. And so for the next meetings and going forward, if, you know, we can, we can look at things on a, on a more quarterly basis, but these are all ending in February of this year. So next slide, please. So in some good news, um, again, looking at, at transactions, but meter transactions, the one thing I can say for this is that in Railroad Square, we are seeing uh, us getting closer to the pre-pandemic uh, levels of parking. So that, that shows that, that in that area, uh, um, parking is uh, going up and that's great. Uh, in the, the, the rest of the district, it's still lagging behind, but again, we're, we're hopeful as things start opening up and we're able to have more events in the downtown that, that we can start seeing our numbers tick up. So next slide, please. And one more, there you go. So, uh, like I said, we are developing our budget. In fact, we've just gone through city manager budget reviews for most of the city's budget. Uh, um, so this is coming from, from that. Uh, this is just a quick parking fund summary. As you know, this, this is an enterprise fund. So there are uh, revenues and expenditures that go along with it. So to tell the whole story, we, we like to look at both of those and this is uh, comparing budget to budget, um, as obviously we don't have the current fiscal year actuals yet, uh, I, I felt that it would be best to just go on a budget to budget basis. So what we're seeing is our, our operating revenue, and, and when I mention operating revenue, that's our charges for services uh, um, and permit fees and, and any licensing fees, anything like that 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 are, are more recurring revenues. Our non-operating revenues are things like interest income that comes in, uh, uh, gains and loss on investments. Those are, are really wild cards. Uh, um, they can swing rather wildly either way. So it's something that if uh, we, we typically get, a, it's usually around $200,000. So, you know, whatever we get uh, uh, more from that, that's just, it, it goes and helps replenish our reserves, but it's not something that I would want to build a budget on. Um, operating expenses are all of our uh, regular O&M and salary and benefit costs. And then we have projects uh, uh, that help maintain all of our lots and structures. And then more major projects, such as uh, uh, the ones that we're showing here, uh, we have, uh, um, there's a, a, an elevator repair that we're doing in garage 12, which is the one right by the Roxy Theater, as you don't know where I'm pointing to, but I was pointing to the Roxy Theater. And, uh, uh, and then another one is our, is some additional funds going toward our lot 10, 
uh, resurfacing project. Um, so our revenues uh, are going slightly up, and that is anticipating the uh, uh, the fee waivers going away at the end of the year, and really seeing a uh, the one thing that we can count on going up in revenue is our our garage revenue, and so. Uh, we were able to add that back in. Obviously, we'll be looking at trends and hopefully being able to adjust our revenue up uh, uh, significantly higher than that in the years to come as parking returns more to normal and we're able to uh, get closer to our, our more annual averages of revenue. Um, the transfers in, I should mention what that is. And so that is uh, funding that comes in from the general fund that pays for our parking enforcement. And so the way that this works is the general fund pays for the parking enforcement officers in that operation, but the general fund keeps the uh, parking fine revenue. It generally comes out to about a one for one. Right now, actually, it's, it's, uh, I, I think the revenue on the general fund side is a little bit less than the transfer, but generally it's either a little bit to the good to the general fund or about a break even point. Um, and then I've gone over the, the operating expenses, like I said, that it involves salary and benefits. Those include our MOU um, uh, costs for the uh, uh, labor agreements that were recently signed. So there's, uh, that's basically what makes up all of that 6% increase. Um, uh, we've kept most everything relatively flat in the, uh, in the fund. And as you can see why, is because we are currently running a deficit. Um, uh, and that's something that we need to look at going forward. Um, next slide, please. Again, because this is a, uh, uh, an enterprise fund that does have reserves, uh, just like any other fund would. Uh, we began our, our fiscal year audited uh, reserves for contingencies was about $7.6 million. Um, uh, we had a deficit for uh, uh, budgeted for fiscal year 22, the current fiscal year. So we, we subtract that $1.7 million deficit from that amount. But then uh, we received the revenue from the sale of lot two, which was about $1.3 million. So you add that, that in. And our estimated reserves, and again, nothing is, that's on a budgetary basis. So that's assuming that we are going to uh, um, receive all the revenue that we estimated and spend all of our budget fully, uh, um, including these changes and we anticipate our reserves at the end of this year to be uh, about 5.9 million. We will know the actual number uh, in the fall of, of uh, uh, 22. Um, so that's significant. Uh, uh, the reserves, again, additional revenue will, will help bring that up. Uh, and, and that's what we're looking for. We also need to be strategic in how we do our maintenance, our large maintenance projects. Right now, we currently, uh, uh, we, we have an asset management plan. That's what the AMP is. Um, and so I just looked out a, a, a few years. We're still um, uh, uh, doing some assessments to see which projects we can continue to defer uh, and which ones not, but according to where we are with the plan now, looking at the, uh, um, uh, the, the 23-24 fiscal year, 24-25 and 25-26, those three, those are what we have planned that we would need to do some uh, uh, um, uh, maintenance on our assets, uh, garages, lots, et cetera. Um, those in itself total about $10 million. You can do the math that that's going to be a challenge. So we will be working on a couple of different things. Uh, if, if there is 
Uh, one of the things that I'm looking at uh, is if there's a way to finance any of that to free up some uh, um, cash flow to be able to, uh, to deal with that, uh, if that might be able to, to help us, uh, we'll need to look at, uh, you know, how we can, uh, you know, augment revenue if possible, things like that. There's a, and, and what, what we can just frankly defer off up to upcoming years and what are the truly essential things we need to move forward with. So there'll be a lot of that going into the, the next fiscal year. Um, so the next budget cycle through, we should have a lot of that nailed down and we'll have a better sense of where we're going with, uh, uh, with that fund. And hopefully the revenues will be back and that'll, that will solve some of our problems. Um, uh, but that's, that's where we are. That's a little bit much for this this committee, but I thought that the context that goes along with a lot of what we talk about here, um, it you know we had this information. And we thought that it would be good to share uh, um, the more budget and and reserve information that normally goes to the finance committee. With that, that's the end of my presentation. If you have any uh, questions, I will do my best to answer. Thank you much, Alan. Uh, Council Member Sawyer, I see you have your hand raised. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, for years, as long as I can remember, uh, there we have our the, those that have been um, critical of our park and parking program and our meters and charging for parking in, in general downtown have uh, suggested a correlation between. Um, charging for parking and our ability to attract and retain retail um, or and, and restaurants, et cetera, in the downtown. Uh, and that if we were to eliminate parking meters, et cetera, the, 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 it would be made up by sales tax. And I'm wondering, uh, this is perhaps a bad time to do it because we have, because of COVID and the challenges on retail, not only in the downtown, but, but citywide, uh, if when we start to resume uh, charging at uh, on the surface lots and the garages and and uh, and our meters um, on on street parking, whether or not we would actually be able to come up with a way to see if there is a correlation between parking fee reductions uh, and general fund uh, increase um, from sales tax. So I know that the, uh, the, the, the ticket revenue is, goes to the general fund, and you just mentioned that it's pretty much of a kind of a wash, if you will. Um, so I, I'm wondering if, if this, I'm not sure if this is really the best time, but it would be um, interesting to somehow tackle that question uh, as far as the, the, the meters and charging people for parking. Um, I, don't, you know, it, it all depends on the vitality of the downtown as well. I mean, if we were, um, you know, a, an incredibly vital downtown, which we're, we are, you know, as a group and our organizations are working to um, vitalize the downtown and, and make it sustainable, um, that, you know, it would be easier to suggest that we could re either reduce or eliminate some of our parking charges. But I'm wondering if we have a, the ability at this point to start looking at when we start to resume our charges for parking, if we see a decrease in in uh, in uh, sales taxes. So I'm just I'm throwing it out there because it would be interesting to be able to show the numbers and how once once the parking was once the fees were resumed, if we saw a drop in sales taxes, both from uh, restaurants and just general retail that it, that might prompt a conversation and some strategies to counter that decrease in our parking revenue uh, or you know in our um, sales taxes so are is there a correlation if you raise the parking rates does retail go down i guess is really kind of a question and i don't know how difficult it would be to track that but um this might not be a bad time to start thinking about a way to put that argument to rest. Um, 
if nothing else, just to, to know in our in our, our ourselves what the realities are and and what if the correlation is between charging for parking and our revenues from uh, sales taxes. So I'm just throwing it out there. Um, it's something to be considering in the in the future. Uh, we are the only city, uh, as far as I know, still in the county that that has parking meters. Um, Petaluma, I don't remember if they have any meters, but in any of their in any of their parking areas. But um, it's something that we are. It's always thrown in our faces, and I, and I I think it would be it would be valuable to be able to to either prove it. Um, or disprove it um, at some point uh, in the in the near future because it does have an impact on our downtown and courthouse square or, or railroad square. Right. Yeah. And yeah. So these are all all questions that 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 we ask and we uh, discuss. I mean, there is the worry that uh, that if you you know who would be parking and how that uh, the turnover of of parking would be those are that's that's it's typically the argument for having the meters out there is that it, it it allows for the turnover of customers to be able to come in employees or 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 folks that aren't that are, that are parking there but aren't visiting the shops are there um, we can look at and and I've actually have already started talking with our sales tax consultant we we look at uh, and can isolate certain geographic areas and determine the sales taxes generated in those areas. So we, a long time ago, looked at the downtown. Um, uh, I've, I've asked them to, to start, uh, that we wanna start analyzing that again. Uh, um, uh, I need to revise our boundaries or make sure that our boundaries are, are connected it goes by by track information so that's that's stuff that we're working on right now to be able to provide that in the in the future uh it's one of the things i want to do is all the major sectors of activity that that whether we're having a lot of development or whatever i want to be able to to isolate and analyze the the tax uh, uh growth in in those areas uh it's we we know it's there we just want to be able to actually put a fine point on it obviously we we uh, a more vibrant downtown we think is gonna uh, be good for everyone not only the parking district to be able to provide the parking for folks but but for the businesses there so it's stuff that we are uh we we will look at and uh and i know uh Chad's already talked to me a few times mentioning that, and and, and so I think he and Raphael and Raisa, uh, um, those are those are questions to to look at that correlation and where we are because I I'm I your your point is is very well taken. There's a lot of anecdotal thoughts on what would happen, and to be able to. Uh, uh, to quantify that would be, uh, I think, uh, uh, a very good thing. So that's what we're working on. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks, Alan. And, and what, what people have always said is, well, you know, Hillsburg doesn't have, um, and I don't want to compare our downtown to Hillsburg. You know, we are we are never going to be chic uh, like Hillsburg, and nor are we patently dependent on visitors uh, as opposed to our residents, uh, like I believe Hillsburg is, and to some degree Sonoma as well. I mean, they have limits on how long you can park without getting right. a ticket. And I'm wondering if we might be able to employ a hybrid um, where there are some areas where we put a time limit and then you get a ticket um, other, and other areas where you would get a uh, where, where there is a meter um, and maybe a blending of the two. Um, because the, the, the argument of that the employees are using up all the parking is it's potentially valid. Um, it's, it's a little hard to track that. I understand that, but and that's mainly anecdotal, and it's usually come from from our um, from the parking department that that they were always in you know historically very concerned about employees taking up 
um, the parking from the from the uh, customers. So it's just you know being able to, to put some reality into that conversation would be would be benefit in in time when it seems appropriate and we have the uh, the ability to, to dedicate the time to do that kind of research um, might be kind of interesting. Um, because we have, you know, we have garages that need to be maintained and operated, and our meters um, subsidize the garages. So we have a unique situation that the other cities in the county do not have, and uh, it's it's hard to get the. It's, sometimes it's hard to get the word out to our downtown users the reason why we have meters. And uh, so anyway, I'll leave it at that. I just, you know, I, I look one of these days. I would look forward to seeing some. Um, some truth placed on that anecdotal, those anecdotal suggestions. Absolutely. Thank you, Member Sawyer. And, and, and to echo your comments, I, I have seen the, the comments from, from business owners, just with the subtle change of the extra hour that they receive on the daily, I believe it was from, from an, an extra hour, from seven to six. I believe it was a small change about two years ago that they did appreciate. Uh, Mayor Rogers, I see that you have your hand raised. Yeah, and I, I agree with, with John. I think that this gives us an opportunity to collect some data and work at how, look at how it actually works. I will point out, though, that you know one of the, the things that I hear the most from people is that it's not the meters themselves. It's the inhospitability of getting a, a parking ticket when the meter expires. And so even going to a time limit doesn't solve that problem if somebody stays longer than their allotted time and they get the parking ticket, we'll still hear from people that that makes that person never likely to come back downtown again, whether that's, that's true or not. Um, I was struck, Alan, and I wanted to ask you about the specific comparison of February, uh, you know, because typically in February, your last two weeks of February are Plenty the Younger, which I imagine is one of the drivers of parking in the garages. Uh, because you've got three hours at your table and then you also have however long you you waited in line for which means pretty much the only place for you to park and not get a ticket is in the parking garages and so i am struck that your before data at the 19 percent for the garages is in a year that has plenty the younger uh in february and then your after data which was i think was at 22 percent is still an increase even without potentially the largest driver of people parking in the garage. So I just wanna make sure I pointed that out because I do think you're then gonna see an impact with your numbers in March because now you do have it in March instead in early April. Um, but so I don't think it's gonna be a, a pretty fair apples to apples comparison uh, from, from 2020 to 2022. Uh, uh, and obviously there's no 2021 data uh, that, that you can compare to as well. Um, so I just wanted to, to flag that for you uh, but with John, I'm, I'm looking for data options for us. I'm looking for finding that compromise. How do we, even if it's the perception, and I think that that's what we hear from businesses a lot, even if it doesn't actually make a difference in terms of the X's and O's, but it's the perception of uh, having a welcoming downtown. I think that I'm definitely open to, to different options or different ways that we can uh, change how we do things. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Alan, I, I do see Chad is online. I, I want to give him an opportunity to, to say hello. Chad, sorry if I put you <laughs> in an awkward uh, moment here. No, not, not at all. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Chad. It's nice to meet you all. I'm not sure if there's much more I can add to this. No, topic. no, no, no. <laughs> well, it's very nice to meet you as well. And, and welcome aboard and, and, and looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Alan, I had a question uh, in regards to the total revenue of 4% that uh, we've seen for the years um, 22 and, and ending 23. Mm -hmm. Historically, has, is a 4% a normal increase or change that you've seen? Yeah, I, I would say uh, given, <laughs> given where we are, uh, normal is kind of out the window. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, uh, I was looking for it. I, shoot, I don't have it right in front of me. Um, the I was looking at what our five-year 
averages are pre-COVID in that. And even with that, there were some, you mentioned the increase in, uh, in, in parking hours that, influ that influenced revenue. Um, but there were, uh, I, I was trying to look at what the average uh, revenues were um, during that period. And if you bear with me for just a second. Well, that, that's fine, Alan. I figured I'd ask you the question before we opened up a public comment. Yeah. We'll give you an opportunity yeah. to, uh, I, I to can research have that number if you didn't have it available. Absolutely. So we'll hold off on, on that question. We will go to public comment if that's okay with you. And we do have public comment um, for this. The first individual is Adrian Covert. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. And Adrian, um, you have permission to speak. If you would confirm your ability to see the um, timer, that would be wonderful. Great, I can. Can you all hear me? We yes. can. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for hosting this discussion. Um, as a uh, I want to say a couple things. I'm a, Adrian Covert. I'm resident of the West End neighborhood uh, near Railroad Square, right downtown. Um, I believe there's probably an existing study on the correlation between sales tax and the cost of parking. I'd be surprised if that didn't exist for a, a town similarly sized as Santa Rosa. Um, I hadn't heard that question before um, today, so I, I'm not aware of one, but I'll look for one. If I can find one, I'll, I'll forward it along to staff. And um, the second, though, as a downtown resident, I'm really opposed to the idea of free parking, No, especially in the name of making downtown more vibrant. Uh, no downtown has ever been made more vibrant by adding more cars. I mean, currently, 47% of the entire landmass of the downtown area is just car infrastructure. And the bigger, biggest part of that is parking. It's almost half the downtown area. I think if the goal is to make downtown more vibrant, the solution to that is we need more people living downtown who can support downtown businesses and work downtown without driving there. I understand building you know, homes makes, takes time and the city's looking at converting parking infrastructure uh, into housing and that's great. Um, but just long-term, if the goal is to make downtown more vibrant, that's done with more people living downtown, not more cars downtown. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Do we have any additional comments this morning? We do. The next speaker will be Steve Bertelbau. Steve, if you would please confirm your ability to see the timer. Yes. Uh, um, welcome, Chad. Uh, you have some big shoes to fill. Uh, I'm Steve Bertelbau with the Transportation Land Use Coalition. And uh, I concur with the comments that you just heard. Um, I think uh, we need to go back and look at uh, Donald Shoup's book, The High Cost of Free Parking, and uh, extend the uh, cost of parking uh, outside downtown, uh, perhaps extend it to other uh, uh, shopping areas. Um, the uh, uh, the long-term trend is to reduce vehicle miles traveled and getting uh, people that are driving uh, thirty or forty thousand dollar automobiles to pay a dollar or so an hour uh, to to park uh, is uh, uh, is not a big deal. Um, so, uh, uh, welcome, Chad. Uh, we'll invite you to one of our meetings shortly, uh, and uh, we hope that we can talk about. Uh, uh, the future of parking in the city. Thank you. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I see that we do not have any email received. Is that correct? That is correct. We have no voicemails or emails for this meeting, and we have uh, no additional raised hands at this time. Very well. We'll go ahead and close the public comment and uh, bring it back. Are there any additional questions for? for our presenter, Alan, or even Chad this one? Well, if you wanted me to follow up on the- Yes, sir, part, yeah. if so, you could. Um, so we looked at uh, uh, four years pre-COVID revenue and looking at our more recurring revenue, so pulling out the, the wide swings and uh, um, 
you know, non-recurring revenue. Uh, you know, we we had an average pre-COVID revenue of about four point eight million dollars. So I think uh, we're budgeting three point eight million. So we're about a million dollars off of of where we would hope to be. Um, and and really uh, the the actual revenue, the increases in actual revenue over time, they you know they go up by you know, uh, there was a 3% increase and a 9% increase and an 8% increase. There's a lot of different factors that go into that. Um, there's, uh, uh, it, it, it's, we, we've done so many different things at different times that affect the amount of revenue coming in to go find that, that, that kind of really good baseline to be able to work from uh, is somewhat challenging, but, uh, the way I would look at it is, is if we could get uh, to that recurring revenue at about the 4.8 million, that's going to get us closer to being able to cover our operating expenses, and then and then we deal with the challenge of when we have uh, larger CIP expenses, larger project expenses that pop up along the way, and that's going to take time of of looking at our planning and doing being very strategic on when we can do those projects and and afford to do it and and quite quite frankly uh um maybe deferring off to where we can build up our reserves to be able to to, to cover those costs a little bit better going these are all things that we're going to be talking about going forward but right right now uh my hope is and chad's hope is that we we can start getting up to Pre-COVID revenue levels uh, that'll that, that'll put some more stability into the fund. Well, and and the comments made uh, in regards to infilling and and promoting developments downtown are are duly noted. Just want to make that known to our to our citizens. Alan, thank you very much for the the presentation. Chad, it was very nice to meet you today, sir. Hope hope to see you again soon. Uh, if there are no additional uh, questions or comments from from either member Sawyer or very well. Uh, Rafa, 3.2, we have Robert Square Association, Community yes, Benefit uh, District. That is correct. And uh, reporting is Chris Wilson, the Executive Director for the Historic Railroad Square Association. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Raphael. Am I, am I, can you hear me? We can hear you. We can. Thanks, Raphael. And good morning, uh, Mayor Rogers and Council Members Alvarez and Sawyer, it's great to see you. Um, I guess I, well, I usually start with the not so pleasant, uh, the graffiti in Railroad Square. Um, I see the reports from our security every morning and the last few weeks at least, seems to be such an increase in graffiti on our buildings or on anything that can possibly be tagged um, and the transients and the number of transients found sleeping sadly on the streets and in doorways and parking areas, um, you know, breaks my heart. But at the same time, it's very bad for our, our merchants and especially our hotels when we're greeting people to Santa Rosa and that's what they're seeing. Um, so I'm, I'm really hopeful that when Caritas opens that there's gonna be another opportunity or another option for some of these people, a place for them to go. Um, so very much looking forward to that and hoping that we can um, resolve some of this is whether it's nicer, it's more, you know, I, I feel like there's going to be more of an increase in that. Um, but on the good news, we have a lot going on. As usual, I've been talking about the wayfinding pedestrian signage for some time, and we now are moved, moving on to the next step with a lot of help from city staff and getting all of our nine locations identified throughout our district with uh, wayfinding pedestrian signage. So now we're on to the next step of starting our marketing and sales to our merchants. Um, I think it's going to be uh, visually very attractive and uh, add to some vibrance that we're we're strongly trying to create down there. Um, 
We've got a couple events coming up on May 1st. We're having a classic car display. It's on Sunday, May 1st. We were going to block 4th Street, but uh, in looking at fees and permitting for blocking the street, we're going to be doing it in Depot Park. And I think it's going to be great. And there'll be music out there and some family activities. So um, 11 to 3 on Sunday, May 1st, come down and visit us. And on Sunday, May 22nd, the Western Hotel, the Branch Line, which is uh, one of our new businesses, and La Coupe Sauvage, another new uh, business in the Western Hotel, is hosting an open house. And so it's going to be an opportunity to tour the Western Hotel and learn some history about the building. There'll be music and food. And so uh, just a really great thing that our merchants are doing. Um, we're working on getting Depot Park cleaned up, really trying to focus on that as it is the centerpiece of our area and wanting it to look more welcoming. Uh, really want to really appreciate the help that James Castro has been giving us to, uh, we're planning a spring cleanup day with volunteers and merchants on the 27th of April is tentative right now to clean up Depot Park. We're looking at getting that sign fixed finally. And also, <laughs> The doggy station that I've been grumbling about for some time about the park being used as a doggy waste station, we are now going to have an actual doggy station. So hopefully the, the puppy owners or dog owners will be utilizing that. Um, we have, we're still working on uh, replacing the bulbs on the lighting in Depot Park that are wrapping the trees. The bulbs are being replaced with smaller ones. And we're looking now, is looking at a proposal we just got to, to extend our lighting down 4th Street, to outline the buildings, to uh, possibly crisscross the street. Um, anyway, we're looking at our budget and seeing what we can do to, again, as we really are trying to create a, a safe, uh, welcoming ambiance down there. Um, the tree trimming through our district is just about complete. This is a temporary sort of a band-aid because eventually those trees are going to be replaced. But for now we're trimming and that project is just about complete. Um, we're looking, we've created an ad hoc committee to look at the sidewalk repair. There's some areas that are pretty treacherous and we probably will be looking to the city for some guidance and help on that too. Really want to thank Raphael for his support with some of these projects that uh, help us get through through all the processes. And um, you'll be seeing a new website design. We've hired a designer to redo and update and refresh the website. So there'll be a whole new welcoming look that I'm very excited about. So probably within the next couple of months, you're going to see a real change on that. So I think that's all I've got right now. If anyone has any questions. Thank you, Chris. Do we have any questions this morning? I don't see that we do. If anything, thank you. And we'll see you on the first. Okay. Uh, with, with, the, with the car show and all the good stuff uh, coming to Robert Square. Uh, let's go ahead and open up public comment. Do we have any comments for, for item 3.2? We, we do. Uh, Gregory Theron, hold on just one moment, please, while I share the screen. Thank you. Um, Mr. Theron, you, if you would confirm your ability to see the timer, that would be wonderful. Yes, I can. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor and Council people. I, I just wanted to comment on Chris's uh, um, hope that once Paradis is open, that somehow uh, there'll be fewer homeless in downtown. I think that's, uh, that's wrong. I don't think that's going to happen at all. I think what Caritas is proposing, as I understand, um, in their family center, in their um, medical uh, component and in Burbank built uh, housing, none of those are going to be available to people who are downtown. Uh, they got to be a lot richer than uh, they are downtown. They got to be a lot sicker than they are downtown and they got to have more family than they have downtown. I just think it's a foolhardy mission to think that somehow Caritas is going to solve the downtown homeless problem. Uh, thanks a lot. And I'd love to hear Jenny Lim say that it will. Thank you, Gregory. Are there any additional comments this morning? There are no additional hands raised at this time. Very well. We'll go ahead and close public comment. And if there are no further questions, Chris, thank you for the report this morning. And again, we'll see you on the first. Okay, thank you. 
Mm -hmm. Item 3.3, Downtown Action Organization. Rafa, if you'd like to present our presenters. Yes, uh, presenting is uh, Caden Sinkel Allenson, Executive Director of the Santa Rosa Downtown District. Welcome, Cadence. Good morning, everybody. Um, good morning, Vice Mayor Alvarez, Mayor Rogers, Council Member Sawyer. Nice to see you all. Um, I'm going to start with just a, a general thanks to our city staff. We've kicked off our season of events on Courthouse Square, and um, I honestly am not sure if there's a department that hasn't been involved in supporting that. So I'm um, just really appreciative especially of all the work Tara and Bryce um, are doing to help make the transition into us managing events on the square um, smooth. We've had a couple of hiccups, but um, I think we're, we're uh, going in the right direction. Uh, Sergeant Ludke and his team have also been fantastic as well. Really appreciate um, their attention and their efforts to just be more visible downtown. That always comes back to me as something from our business owners, letting me know that they're, they're seeing the DET and they appreciate that presence. <clears throat> Um, especially as um, we are seeing uh, new new homeless members of downtown. So it's, it's definitely increasing, it's shifting. We continue our regular work with Catholic Charities to um, try to get some of the folks who've been here for a long time into housing. They come through um, almost always once a week and we meet with them an additional time to review and, and kind of strategize how we can support um, the homeless members of the public living downtown, but we are seeing a lot of new faces as well. Um, also want to just thank uh, Raisa and Jill Scott for coordinating a meeting regarding um, SLA and Garage 5, which we're going to be hosting this afternoon. Um, I think it's really important that our, <clears throat> excuse me, our downtown uh, property and business owners are able to um, weigh in and, excuse me, and provide feedback. So uh, appreciate being part of that process moving forward. Um, just some quick updates down here. Uh, La Fondita finally opened, very excited about that. Um, Bad Times is almost there. I think they're waiting on a few final permits, but hopefully will be open soon. Took, took both of those quite a while um, to get up and running. Uh, even though we really just started our event season, we're getting a lot of positive feedback on all the activities that are going on and everything that's been planned. So um, it's nice to see that that's generating um, kind of a lot of optimism as the weather improves and as we head into summer. Our business owners, especially our, specifically our restaurant owners, are also very excited about the parklets. Another big thank you to Raisa and to Gabe for all the work that they've done. Um, on that program, um, appreciate them taking the time to listen, collect feedback, um, weigh in, um, and really listen to what is going to make it feasible for our business owners to establish parklets. I think um, we all <laughs> we all want to see the pallets that were very generously installed two years ago um, removed. You know, they were meant to last one summer, and we're we're ready for a permanent program to um, come into place. So uh, I just want to reiterate my thanks to the city staff for really listening to what's going to make it feasible for our business owners to um, build and manage those permanent parklets. So um, definitely appreciate all the time and energy that's gone into that so far and um, just remain committed to supporting <clears throat> supporting staff and our business owners as they go through that transition. Um, on the, the beautification side, our design and improvement committee is going to be meeting next week. So I look forward to updating everyone on that um, at our May meeting. There's a number of uh, projects that they'll be um, uh, discussing, some uh, beautification projects the DAO will take on, some things that um, we've been discussing with parks and public works that need to be weighed in on. So a lot going on there. Um, I will echo Chris's thanks to James Castro and the park staff, um, the skate stoppers that have gone in. I think have been have been a huge help. Um, it's we're just very grateful for some small steps to protect the physical space of Courthouse Square. Um, obviously, we are not anti skateboarder, but we are anti um, the square being used in in ways that it is not it was not built to be used. Um, I think we've seen just a lot of a lot of damage, especially to uh, the concrete um, planters and our benches. So um, in, in follow-up to that, you know, it is, it is too late for, for almost all of our benches. In fact, they've all been 
um, pretty well destroyed. So uh, really grateful that we've got uh, three new benches coming in. Um, it, it complaints about the benches come to me uh, almost as regularly as, as complaints about um, homeless and parking. So I'm, I'm really grateful that that is uh, being prioritized and um, move forward so that we can get some safer, cleaner, uh, more durable benches into the square. I think that'll be uh, a huge help. Uh, and just th those are, those are going to match. These are not. They're going to match the ones that the DAO installed around the crepe myrtles in 2020. They're going to match the picnic tables. So the look um, will very much be in line with um, everything else happening on the square, which is great to maintain that palette. Um, also, we really appreciate um, the new three section trash cans that we've got. I think as as we are. Uh, really doing as much as as we can from between the chamber and the and the DAO to support our events coming downtown. Um, we are reminding everyone who has an event that if they have food vendors, they need to be in compliance with the zero waste foodware ordinance. And having those um, three section trash cans um, just ha helps a little bit. It um, takes a little bit off their plate to have to coordinate. Um, depending on the size of their event, we often ask them to bring in extra receptacles, but um, it really helps to have those there. So I appreciate James and his team making that shift. Um, <clears throat> onto the event side, our annual uh, Easter egg hunt is running. We've got 29 businesses participating. Um, we've had hundreds of families come through. I think they're all um, they're all hoping to complete the passport and enter to win a trip to Disney. So we've got um, four tickets on Alaska Airlines, three nights in a hotel, and, and four two-day park hopper passes that we're giving away. Um, to uh, the, the winning family. So if you complete the passport and enter to win, uh, you have a chance at, at winning that Disney trip. <clears throat> um, as I mentioned earlier though, we are, we are already kicking off an extremely busy event season. And I know Tara will talk about um, the events that the city is permitting when she reports out, um, but that doesn't include the, the 2022, 20, 23 events that we are supporting between now and October. Um, we, uh, I, I think I probably get a request every one or two a week for new events coming in. So people are eager to be out, they're eager to be planning, they're eager to be connecting. Um, and we're really excited that they're seeing Courthouse Square as a place to do that. Um, we are, our goal in supporting these events is to drive economic activity downtown, support the small businesses that participate and support um, the surrounding economy of downtown. So it's really um, it's really important that we continue to do this and make it as easy as possible for the events to be to be coming here. We did have our first two over the last two weekends. Um, I think I think moving forward we have at, at least one event a week between now and the end of summer, um, which is huge. It's just <clears throat> a lot of a lot of activity being driven to the area. Uh, the chamber is also coordinating um, a summer programming series. So it's gonna be every Thursday night in the square. First Thursdays of the month will be um, movies. We've got our first one kicking off uh, Pride weekend. We're doing a double feature with, um, in collaboration with Sonoma County Pride. Uh, and then the rest of the, um, the music is being coordinated by uh, Josh Windmiller and our, um, our movies will hopefully be announced in the next uh, week or so. We've been collecting some, some interesting, interesting feedback on social media. Um, we're also working on kind of a, a little bit of a pilot program to do some um, family focused events, smaller, smaller events to just drive families here um, in the late afternoon uh, during the summer. So uh, we'll be sharing more details on that once we're able to roll those out. <clears throat> and then uh, of course, we're already working on Fall Fun Fest. We're already working on Winter Lights. Um, and we are planning to bring the uh, synthetic rink back again and hopefully improve on some of the ele el other elements of that event. Um, so between all the external events we're supporting, all of the um, seasonal events that the chamber is taking on, um, we're really excited to be bringing on an event coordinator who will um, help oversee all of that activity. So um, anticipating them to start at uh, some point in the next week. Um, so I'll, I'll be thrilled to be introducing her to all of you and uh, just very grateful to have that level of support for um, our event hosts and for all the activities that, that the chamber is taking on. 
Um, uh, I was I was very glad to hear Alan kind of reiterate the current parking garage incentives. We know there's been a ton of confusion around them. It's been hard to promote because they've been temporary and, and just extended. Uh, we know it's not realistic for all of those incentives to be maintained, but we definitely want to continue the discussion and figure out how we can help simplify um, garage parking, how we can get um, uh, some or, or a portion of the incentives extended so that we've got support for retailers and restaurants who utilize the garages. We've got a lot of folks who, who would like to take advantage of the validation program, but um, kind of with all the back and forth, it, it has not been a focus either of ours or of theirs. Um, and I, I will say that most downtown businesses are not proponents of free parking um, as it stands, just free parking because it does create other challenges. Um, but they want to be a part of the solution for consistency, clear messaging, and um, making it easy for people to park down here, uh, kind of addressing that perception that parking isn't friendly, um, that parking is difficult, that parking is expensive. Um, I don't think any of those things are true, but the perception absolutely exists. And so whatever we can do to support uh, shifting that, we want to be a part of that. So we look forward to <clears throat> working with the parking district on that. Um, and are very excited to welcome Chad uh, and appreciate Alan um, setting up a meeting for us, I think later in this week. So um, excited to have him on board and, and kind of keep that conversation going. Uh, the last thing um, I'll mention is that uh, we've got, the DAO has some, a few committees that will be um, <clears throat> convening in the next few weeks just to support the priorities of the district this year. So I'm excited to share more of those details with you as, as it gets going. And um, of course, get your feedback on those items in the coming months as well. That is it for me. Thank you, Cadence. Uh, welcome La Fondita. Definitely a, a beautiful addition to downtown Santa Rosa. I uh, remember Sawyer, see you have your hand raised. You're, 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 mute, you're on mute, sir. Um, I was curious, uh, Cadence, what's Bad Times? Bad Times is um, a, the, it's the tattoo and art gallery that's going in where Skeeters was. Okay, cool. I'm yeah, just it's, curious. It's, it's a, it's a, if you haven't it's walked, a, if you haven't walked past, um, you, you should. It looks really great inside and the, the art on the wall is pretty cool. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And Katie, as I must share with you, um, I was speaking with a gentleman uh, from Willoughby's, uh, Sonny, and he spoke very well of not only the Metro, but of you as well, and very appreciative of your efforts to, to and what you do to support the downtown uh, businesses. So thank you. Of course. Um, if there are no additional comments or questions, uh, let's go ahead and open the item for public comment. Do we have anybody? Um, online we have, we have no raised hands at this time perfect we'll go ahead and close public comment uh any additional comments or questions councilman sawyer very well cadence thank you very much and hopefully we will be seeing you out there i've definitely noticed the increase of, of traffic and activity in downtown santa rosa which i'm very happy to see and seeing the, the earth day event that we have on the 23rd and many others coming i, I really am hopeful of downtown Santa Rosa being exactly what it's meant to be. And that's vibrant. Yeah, I did, sorry, I do wanna do a quick plug for um, our event this coming weekend. Absolutely, as many we as you like. Have, um, SRPD is doing a spring event on Saturday. Uh, I believe it's 11 to two, although it could be off on those hours in one way, but we've got it up on our website. Um, they're gonna have candy, coffee for, for the adults, the Easter bunnies coming and uh, just lots of spring fun for families. So appreciate SRPD and uh, Sonoma County Parks putting that together and hope everyone will, will come down. And, and what is that website? Uh, it's downtownsantarosa.org is where we have uh, all, of our, um, all of our events listed. Perfect, thank you very much. With that being said, uh, let's go ahead and move on to item 3.4, public safety. Rafa, if you'd like to present our presenter. Yes, uh, presenting is Sergeant Lucky from Santa Rosa Police Department and uh, also overseeing the downtown enforcement team. Welcome, Sergeant. Hi, good morning. Thanks, Raphael, for the introduction. Appreciate it. Uh, been a busy last month. Um, I hope you all have seen some increased 
activity with us and uh, presence in the downtown area. We've been spending a lot of time uh, due to the increase of people from the Planet of the Younger release. So we made sure that we're spending a lot of uh, time in the downtown area and Cordell Square area or uh, Railroad Square area. Um, I've had the opportunity in the last month to meet with uh, a number of organizations, including Chris Wilson from Railroad Square Association and uh, Cadence from Downtown Action Organization, uh, as well as some of our community or neighborhood groups, uh, Olive Park and Juilliard Park. So um, it's, it's been really good engaging with those folks and getting to know some of them and getting to know and understand some of the problems going on downtown. Um, additionally, we've dedicated uh, at least two times a week now, um, high visibility foot patrols in the downtown area as well as Railroad Square. Um, had the opportunity to meet and talk with a lot of a lot of you as well as some of the business owners and community members, which I think has been really successful with our uh, with our uh, hopes to increase outreach and engagement with uh, downtown Railroad Square. Um, as I said before in our last meeting, we have a number of large scale uh, encampment cleanups going on throughout the city. So for that reason also, we're trying to increase the downtown presence uh, and our patrols uh, in addition to uh, dealing with enforcement and quality of life issues. We're also working really closely with our partners uh, with In Response and our host team, Catholic Charities, to also provide that outreach um, in conjunction with that enforcement downtown. Um, had the opportunity to attend a few uh, events as event season is coming up. Um, as Kate mentioned earlier, uh, there's uh, events almost every weekend on the square downtown and railroad uh, square. So we've made sure that some of our DET, DET officers are stopping by and, and checking in with folks. So uh, we're gonna continue to do that and uh, you know, continue to be high visibility and, and with our outreach. Uh, we also had the opportunity this last month to participate in our Coffee with a Cop program downtown. Uh, it's a program that we uh, have been involved in for a few years now uh, with uh, the, the pandemic, obviously, that had gone away slightly, but um, I'm happy to say that we're uh, continuing that program and look forward to uh, meeting more folks and going to some more businesses downtown uh, with that program. Thank you, sir. That's all I have to report. Thanks. No, absolutely no. Thank you for, for stopping by and saying hello. Maybe we'll have, we'll grab a cup of coffee here soon enough. Uh, Councilman Sawyer, any questions for? Sorry, no, nope. just, just, just I, thanks, I did Josh. Make, I, I did want to make a comment in regards to a conversation we had in a prior meeting uh, when it came to surveillance cameras or closed caption or what what is called closed circuit. I believe it might be the cameras. And I had a conversation with our city attorney, Sue uh, Gallagher. And I also had a conversation with our police chief in regards to what we're doing with cameras in, in, in our city streets for, for traffic safety and others. And what I asked the chief to remember downtown Santa Rosa as we implement technology in, in, in our beautiful city and how we can actually begin the conversation. And I know uh, Councilman Sawyer, we spoke of the resistance that our community felt towards, towards the big brother uh, fears. But in, in the conversation that I had with the, with the city attorney is with the younger population that we all carry phones around, we're already being tracked with our every step. Uh, and, and maybe there won't be that such resistance from our community. So I just wanna throw it out there. I've been having the conversation with, with multiple folks and uh, hopefully we can we can dive even further into it when, when that time comes. Um, appreciate you being here though, sir. Are there any recording uh, this morning for public comments? We do have an individual um, phone number, please. Let me go ahead and Thank um, you. share the screen. Uh, Mr. Dick Kaito, um, hold on one moment. There we go. And Jake, if you would just confirm your ability to see the screen, that would be wonderful. Yes, I see the screen. Wonderful, thank you. So um, I'd just like to give you some uh, feedback about the In Response um, program. 
So um, we, uh, I'm a gig hideout with uh, uh, Burbank Gardens neighborhood and I'm active leader in our neighborhood watch program. We watch Burbank Gardens neighborhood, Santa Rosa Avenue and Juilliard Park. And um, so on Friday, there was a man acting extremely strange, like he was on drugs or something like that, or sick, or just, he was sad shape. I talked to him and he answered coherently that he was okay. So I kind of left him alone. Another one of our members was also concerned about him. Um, and um, so after a while he was hanging around in Juilliard Park. And so I approached him and I talked to him and uh, he wasn't causing any harm or threatening anybody or whatever, but I, I don't know, he was not in good shape. So I told him about the in response and asked him if, I sh if he wanted me to call them for him. And he very coherently said, no, thank you. So since he wasn't threatening anybody or doing any harm or causing any crimes, I just left him alone. Well, I don't know if he stayed in the park at night. I didn't see anybody sleeping in the park at night. But anyway, he was there the next day on Saturday and apparently someone called police. And so police came out. And so I went over and approached the police officers and asked if I could speak to them. And the officer in charge said yes. And so I told, told them what I knew. And so he said, yeah, well, we're, you know, we're going to get him some help. And I said, yeah, I, I agree. So um, they did not call in response. They called the fire department and a hook and ladder track showed up and then an ambulance showed up and then they strapped them into the, into the stretcher and they took him away. So I don't know what happened to him. But um, that's the end of that story. But then the next, on Monday, it just so happened that my wife and I were walking through, walking downtown and we heard a, a woman um, at the transit mall, the bus transit mall, sitting on a bench acting, you know, not hurting anybody, but screaming at the top of her lungs, you know, in just craziness. Probably another one of these meth users who's just too, too much and going through all the demons in their mind. They never hurt anybody, at least I've never seen them do that, but they act crazy. So someone did call in response and the, and the in response showed up, but, she refused and she walking away yelling and screaming and refusing to deal with them. And, um, and you know, I don't know what happened after that. So anyway, um, just uh, some learning curves, I think, for our program, which I support, but it's not going to be that easy. And also love coffee with a cop. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Uh, do we have any additional comments this morning? We have no additional raised hands at this time. Oh, perfect. We'll go ahead and close uh, public comment on item 3.4. Uh, Sergeant, appreciate you being here this morning. Uh, Member Sawyer, any additional comments or questions before we let the sergeant no. go back to his duties and patrol downtown? Because I hear there is much more presence and people Just are thanks, very appreciative. Josh, thanks for, thanks for your help and for making things safer and making people feel safer downtown. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Hey, thank you for having me. Enjoy your day, sir. With that being said, let's go ahead and move on to item 3.5, uh, maintenance of courthouse square. Rafa? Yeah, reporting is uh, Tim Finnegan on behalf of James Castro. Uh, welcome, Tim. And Tim is the uh, parks crew supervisor. So welcome again. Good to see you. Good, to see you. Good morning and thank you. Um, uh, some of the things have already been covered as far as, uh, you know, the, the escape stoppers, which uh, started getting installed about two weeks ago. Um, they are uh, about two thirds of the way complete. Um, we were able to get uh, the skate stoppers for the um, south side of the square on three planters there. Um, we're still waiting for uh, uh, material or for the stoppers for the south side. Um, they require a little bit different um, paper to the edges. And so um, we are waiting to get those. And then once those are received, we will get those installed in, in pretty quick order. Um, it's, it's great to, to see them out there. They do look good. Um, we will be monitoring those to see on uh, the damage or vandalism of, um, of those. Um, from what I understand, there, there's some have already been are missing. So we will have to address those and hopefully get those uh, secured better um, so they don't end up missing um, because they are 
definitely a nice feature, but they also come at a price. Um, so we will hopefully that we can get those secured nicely. Um, the trash cans that were put in uh, was from a, a grant that we got uh, through um, Recology on uh, supporting the zero waste program. And uh, we thought it was fitting that uh, that would be a great place to put those cans. So um, to help support uh, the effort of zero waste and to give options for the, the park users on the square um, um, something to use. So those went in as well. Um, the, um, the work on the Greenway has been um, consistent. We've been having our crews down there um, a couple times a week uh, doing cleanup and graffiti abatement. Um, and that's been uh, working well. Um, also been working with electricians on uh, trying to keep the lights on down there as well. Um, that's a process that unfortunately it's a never ending process. Um, they are uh, working very hard on finding ways to secure the power outlets or the power um, connections, whether it's in the ground or in the pool itself or in the light. Um, they are working on trying to get those lights secured uh, so they can stay on um, for the, the use of the public uh, down the greenway. Um, James has been working on um, uh, securing um, some funds and on um, a new sign for Depot Park. Um, that is something that was discussed during the meeting uh, that he had with Chris. Um, and uh, we are looking at uh, um, a different, not necessarily a different uh, style, but in the same sort of um, fashion as the, the current one. Um, um, we, we did uh, find one that the individual actually makes um, signs out of, out of stone. And so he's able to um, to uh, carve out or basically sandblast um, stone with uh, names and so forth. And it actually, it would be similar um, similar to the one that's down there, but um, yet um, very very um, fitting for the location of it. Um, I believe that is everything. I, the communication with uh, uh, Railroad Square and downtown. Um, has been great. Um, uh, James has definitely been able to uh, spend the time that probably this area needs. So it's been a great relief off of this parks department that he's uh, involved with the groups and being able to serve um, them down the downtown um, in a, a much uh, better manner than what we have been in the past. So it's great to have that happen, as well as the volunteers um, of the businesses and um, helping us out and uh, caring over care of our park. So that's greatly appreciated. And with that, if anybody has any questions. Well, thank you, sir. Council, Council Member Sawyer, do you have any questions this morning? No, thank you, sir. Very well. And, and it sounds like uh, those uh, deterrents might just be too nice uh, with the beautiful <laughs> oak, oak design and the acorn on them. We'll see how that works out, right? Yeah. And we'll go ahead and open <laughs> and thank you for the, for the, for the update. Uh, we'll go ahead and open uh, public comment on item 3.5. Do we have any any comment this morning? We do not have any raised hands at this time. Very well. We'll go ahead and bring it back. Uh, Tim, appreciate the, the update again, and we'll be speaking soon. All right, thank you. With that being said, 3.6, permitted events and public art. Rafa? Yes, and presenting we have Tara Thompson, Arts and Culture Manager. Welcome, Tara. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi, nice to see you all. Um, I have a brief update on permitted events and the public art program. Attached to the agenda was the updated list of upcoming special event permits in downtown. And the ones that are highlighted on the screen are the ones that are new since the last report I provided. Um, so you'll see that the blanket permit issued to the Metro Chamber is on this list, but it does not list all of their individual events. So I'm directing you to their website so you can see all of those events that Cadence mentioned. Um, so the rest of the items on this list are the events that we, the City of Santa Rosa, are permitting separately, mainly because they don't fall within the blanket permit of the Metro Chamber and usually include um, extensive road closures, not always, but usually. 
So the new ones since last time are an Easter Sunday homeless outreach event put on by the Redwood Gospel Mission. Then we have the uh, classic car show that Chris Wilson mentioned in uh, the Depot Park parking lot on May 1st. And then um, if you scroll down, Eileen, I think at the bottom there, there is just one more, which is the Railroad Square Music Festival on June 12th. That's also in Railroad Square and includes Wilson, 5th, 4th Streets, and the Depot parking lot. So happy to answer any questions about upcoming permitted events. If there are any, otherwise I can go right into my other updates. Council member? No, thank you, Tara. No questions. If you would like to proceed. Okay, great. Well, um, going into um, the public art program updates, uh, I'll mention one fun, event that is planned that is related to our public art program, but it is the Out There Santa Rosa campaign. We have done a new branding and website uh, for the Out There Santa Rosa program, and we will be launching the program and the website on Sunday in Courthouse Square. So I invite you all to come down to Courthouse Square Sunday, 1 to 3 p.m. We'll have a crazy flash mob dance party down there to celebrate how Out There Santa Rosa is. Um, so uh, that's, that's something we've been working on, and some of you may have seen a preview of that website, but it will be launched on Sunday. So for other art updates, um, wanted to share that for the Unum sculpture in Courthouse Square, due to all of the conflicts uh, occurring, the cost of stainless steel skyrocketed recently and has delayed some of the material um, procurement and shipping for the piece that has uh, pushed back the installation by about a month. So we're in, right now looking at August, this August for the installation of that sculpture. For the Fifth Street Parking Garage Project, the Help Each Other Grow mural by MJ Linda Lawyer and Joshua Lawyer. We finally have an estimated installation start date for that mural, which will be May 2nd. So we'll be starting to see that work take place and they should finish that up over the month of May. Um, those are really the only public art updates I have today. We've been busy working on a lot of programs. Happy to answer any questions, though. I do, and thank you uh, through, through the chair. Uh, Tara, uh, where did you say this mural is going? I'm sorry, I missed that. That's okay. It's um, the Fifth Street parking garage. So it's actually garage three, but on Fifth Street at Orchard Street. And the mural is on the, let's see, south west corner of the parking garage at the intersection of fifth street and orchard street excellent thank you well with that being said uh, i'll definitely have my two right shoes on for that dance party uh, in downtown <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and open up a uh, public comment on on this item do we have anybody uh, ready to speak this morning we have no raised hands at this time perfect go ahead and close that up uh tara thank you very much for the update and again, we'll, we'll be seeing you soon. Our last item for the day, uh, 3.7, community promotions, funding update, and impacts on upcoming events. And again, actually, did you actually do both of the reports? I believe you might have. Oh, no, I, I have an additional um, item here to share with. Oh, with please do, please do. Committee. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so hi, me again. Um, <laughs> Uh, this, this is really just a heads up for um, the subcommittee members and um, our downtown community to raise the issue that, uh, as you know, the city has had a community promotions fund program to support events in Santa Rosa, um, mainly goes towards in-kind services to support large-scale events, such as the police services, the public works, road closures, or fire staffing for large events. Um, and that program is currently on hold. It has, it was suspended over the years of COVID. Obviously events couldn't take place. And so the funding is, will not be available for event support again until next year. And so there are some events that are going to be impacted by that, that I wanted to just put on your radar. You may be hearing from them today or in the future. Um, and mainly the, the first one that I'm aware of that is greatly impacted is the Wednesday night market. It's a 16 week event that has always relied heavily on the city's in-kind support through the community promotions fund. And without that program, 
uh, right now, um, staff and the organization who puts on the event are working to try to find solutions to help support that event. Um, there's no uh, perfect answer yet to, to address that, but we're looking into all the options that we can think of. Um, just wanted to make sure that the subcommittee and the council members were aware of that. Uh, and if you have any questions about other events that may be impacted, I can share that in the future. There, there are a handful. Uh, some events that had traditionally received this support are not coming back yet this year. Um, so there are definitely a smaller number of events that are going to be in this kind of uh, limbo zone this year because of the lack of that program. But again, just wanted to bring this to your attention. Uh, there's not, um, no, no action is needed at this point. It's just to raise the issue. Thank you. And, and I do appreciate you doing so, especially with, with such an important event that is the ones that I market for our downtown corridor. Thank you very much. Uh, being that it is a new item or an item, uh, we should probably take public comment on that as well. Um, do we have anybody ready to speak on the item by chance? We do. Uh, Tina Caselli will be the next speaker. I'll go ahead and share the public comment screen. Thank you. And Tina, um, if you would confirm your ability to see the screen, please. Yes, I can. Thank you. Great. Well, hello. Um, my name is Tina Castelli, and um, I'm uh, representing the Wednesday Night Farmers Market. Um, uh, hello to the mayor. Uh, hello to uh, Rafael and Tara, who have been such a great help trying to get us started and helping us through. Uh, we are a board of a uh, brand new board. The whole market was closed down for two years. Um, we literally lost our website. We lost a lot of things that are, are we're rebuilding again. This is our rebuilding year. And we're a board of uh, local leaders. Most of them now are actually downtown businesses or vendors who want to get this uh, event back. Uh, we, we, this would be our 33rd year um, as a community gathering place, um, as the place where uh, people of all ages and all um, representations can come and enjoy uh, the evening uh, with their community. Um, so we are just uh, considering this a rebuilding year. And we understand about the community grant that Tara mentioned, you know, and that's just one of those COVID things, right? And um, I wanted to thank Cadence also because she uh, put together a meeting with all the downtown businesses and me, and we um, really had a great session. Uh, I, they got, we got to all voice their opinions and they were really uh, positive. Um, uh, Riley De Benedetti, uh, who's a member of our board, uh, former owner of Willie Bird Turkeys for many, many years, board member for 30 years, reminds us that this event was originally put together when the mall was built. To, and it was it was originally produced by the downtown businesses to get public and to get business back into the for uh, old courthouse square uh, area. So that is still our goal, and uh, we care about the downtown businesses. And we made arrangements not to put booths in front of their uh, businesses if they're open. Um, let's see what else do I have. The public response has been amazing. Uh, we are our Facebook pages and uh, my phone uh, and my emails are just lighting up with everybody so excited for it to be back. So we literally feel like we can't not let it come back. You know, we have to make it happen. And if we break even, we'll be happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so we're, we're looking for um, a new support from the community. We've got some really great new uh, relationships we're building with Poppy Bank. And the Russian River Valley wine growers, believe it or not, we may be serving Russian River Valley wines uh, every week. Um, and um, uh, we're excited to partner with Columbia Distributing. We're gonna be handling all the beer pouring ourselves. Uh, uh, we've got the unbelievable bands. Uh, we spent another $10,000 on bands this year because we want this to be a great opening. And um, we wanna be back and we wanna continue. And we know next year we will, um, hopefully be on our way back to our 2019 strength financially. I, I believe we will be. And thank you for the efforts that you're putting into to bringing the life back to downtown uh, thank you, um, Santa thank Rosa. You, thank you all of you for help, your help and anything uh, we can do in the future to um, partner and uh, make it a great um, experience for our people, our citizens. And, 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 likewise, and likewise, thank you for your comment this morning. We'll go ahead and bring it back. Uh, 
on the item 3.7. Uh, are there any additional, actually, before we bring it back, are there any additional comments this morning? There are no additional public comments for this item this morning. Very well. With that being said, we've gone through our items uh, uh, this morning. I want to appreciate everyone who's who's uh, who's given their input. And forward we must go. Member Sawyer, any, anything that you'd like to say before we adjourn this meeting? No, thank you. Good job, Mr. Vice Mayor. I appreciate it, sir. Um, I'm settling into the saddle. <laughs> Rafa, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Secretary Perry. Thank you very much this morning. And the time is now 10.01, and this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, everyone.